Hey, this is Steve Noble with Noble Tech Tips for Lowbrow Customs. So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna look at replacing your front brake rotor. Now you may need to replace your front brake rotor over time, because what happens is as you're braking, your brake pads faintly wear down in small amounts into your brake rotors. And then you end up getting grooves in your brake rotors. And the downside of the groove is then when you replace your pads, the new pad just sits on the top of those grooves and doesn't actually grab the entire surface of the rotor. And then you lose a lot of your braking ability due to that reduced surface contact. We're gonna pull the rotor off of this thing, clean up the wheel, put a rotor back on it, and that way it'll be good to go for a new set of pads. We got our 2012 Sports Drew up here on the lift. First thing we're gonna do is pull our front fender off of this thing, then we'll pull our caliper off, then pull the axle out and pull the front wheel off the bike. So the first step you're gonna to wanna to take is to jack your bike up any way you want to, and then make sure it's secured down to where it won't fall over when you're working on it. The big thing you're after is you wanna make sure your front wheel spins, that way you can get to all your bolts, and obviously there's no weight on your axle when you pull your axle out of the thing. So let's get right to it. So you're gonna to wanna to take the front fender off of this thing because that way the bolts will actually clear the tire or the tire will clear the bolts when you actually go to pull the front wheel off. So pop these four bolts out, and set this off someplace where it won't get damaged. Now, the next thing you're gonna to wanna to do, while you have the thing up in the air, you're gonna to wanna to go around and break all your rotor bolts free. On this 2012 Sporty, it is a T40 Torx bit. So the easy way to do this is get your breaker bar up here. You can hold on to the wheel with your left hand there. You should be able to put it down here. Then you can turn the bolt free. This is a little easier than chasing the wheel around so it's sitting on the ground. That one right there. And from there, make sure everything's loose. All right. Then from there, we'll pull these two bolts out and pull the brake caliper off. Carefully set your brake caliper off to the side. Now from here, you're gonna take a 15 16 nut on this 2012 and the axle. You can support the other side with an Allen wrench through the hole in the axle. Break that free. And once that's backed off a little bit, you can then tap on this with a soft face hammer and get the axle started to move out the other side. So before you take the axle out, you're gonna to have to undo the clamp that actually holds the axle tight. This is a 5 16 Allen on this side and 9 16 socket and just break that free. And you can just loosen that up. You don't have to take it all the way out. Now that everything's free, you can take a soft face hammer, tap on a little bit, get it to move a little bit. That'll help make sure everything's nice and free down in there. You should be able to undo the nut hopefully be able to push it out with your hand. Now remember there's an order to this. You have your nut, then there's a washer up in here. I'm gonna grab the axle with my left hand and twist it, set our washer down to the side. Now I'm gonna hold the wheel up a little bit with my right hand and I'm gonna pull the axle out with my left hand. And there is a spacer in here that's probably gonna fall out. So we're just gonna keep our eye on that. Pull the axle out like so. Set that in a clean location. Now I'm gonna roll the front wheel forward. Now there's a spacer on each side. So you wanna keep an eye on that because they're gonna fall out otherwise. So we have the larger spacer on the right. Well, the larger spacer on the left side of the motorcycle and then the skinny spacer on the right side of the motorcycle. Keep that in order. We're gonna put them back on the axle in the same direction. But from there, you can pull your front wheel off. Then you can take your T40 Torx bit and finish taking the bolts out of the rotor. T40 
Dinner's ready. Now that all your bolts are out, you should be able to just pop your rotor right on off of there. Then from there, you're ready to clean up your wheel and put your new brake rotor on. Now that the rotor's off, what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna clean up the bolt holes that actually hold the rotor on there. They're aluminum, so they corrode, plus there's often thread locker in there. You wanna clean all that out, that way you get a good torque spec when you put your rotor back on. But we have a tap for a 5 16 18 tap. So it's in our tap wrench, got a little lubricant on there. We're just gonna thread this all the way in. We shouldn't really be taking any notable amounts of metal out. We're just trying to clean corrosion and Loctite out of the threads. So we'll just go around to each bolt hole. You can see we got a few little shavings there, but nothing major. So we'll clean that off and go to the next one. And these taps should be available at your local hardware store. All right. Now that all our, tap, all our threads are cleaned out, you're gonna wanna clean off the face of the wheel here. This is a big thing a lot of people get hung up on, is they don't clean this off, whether it be for the brake rotor or rear drive sprocket or rear drive pulley. But they don't clean it up, and then when you bolt the new one on there, it's sitting on a little bit of corrosion, and then they start rocking back and forth, and then your bolts could possibly fail. So that's the big step everyone overlooks, and then you hear about problems with the pulley or the brake rotor. So take some Scotch-Brite or some medium grit sandpaper or even one of those sanding blocks, and just kind of give everything a little once over here. It's enough to knock any corrosion off, any high spots. That way you have a nice, good mating surface for when your rotor bolts up to it. Because remember, everything takes up space, including dirt and grease. All right, now we're gonna take a little compressed air, blow the thing off, clean up the back side of the rotor, and then we're ready for reassembly. The same with the back side of the rotor. Gonna take a little bit of scotch right here. Since we're reusing this rotor, and clean up the mating surface here. If you have a new rotor, it still doesn't hurt to give it a quick little once over just to make sure there's no high spots or anything like that on there. Run your fingers across it, make sure everything still feels pretty clean. So now that everything's cleaned up, threads are cleaned out, we're ready to reinstall the rotor. So on some year rotors, it's just completely flat. But on the Sportsters, there's a little bit of a counter bore right here, and that's where the heads of the bolts go. So you're gonna put this up here, make sure all the bolt holes line up. You're gonna to wanna to put some medium strength thread locker onto your bolts. You don't need a lot, just a wee little dab there. Probably more than you need there. Thread each one of those in there. Now your bolts should thread in nice and easy. If you've got to put a wrench on them or something to get it down until it's flush, you must have a problem with your threads. You want to clean that up with a tap. Just a wee little drip like that, smear it down in there. Now they're all started in there. Take our T40 socket here. Run them in the rest of the way. You want to run everything in in a crisscross pattern. Because if you just tighten up for one side, it can cock it sideways, and then you'll get an inaccurate torque spec. So those are in there finger tight. Now we're just going to take our ratchet. We're just going to snug each one of them up. So everything's snugged up. Now we can reinstall the wheel and then we will torque the bolts once the wheel's installed on the motorcycle. Now, to get your axle ready, you still should still have your spacers on here. So you're gonna to wanna to keep these in order. 
And you're gonna to wanna to make sure you have a nice film of either grease or never seize or something like that on your axle. Otherwise your axle will freeze your inner race or your bearings and you will never get that sucker off of there. So this still has a nice film of grease on it, so that'll be good. So we're gonna set the axle off to the side. Roll the front wheel up in place. So you're gonna take your spacer on the right side of your motorcycle, slide that up in place. Put the spacer on the other side of your motorcycle. Make sure it's up against the bearing surface right there. And then it's a very tight fit, but once everything's perfectly aligned, it'll slide right back in there. So start this in here. And just pick the wheel up in place. And everything's lubed up as it should be and slide the axle in until it bottoms out. From there, put your spacer on, then take your axle nut, thread it all the way up on there until it stops. All right, so now that the axle's in place, we have everything snugged up here. We're gonna take our Allen wrench, put it through that hole on the other side of the axle. Then we have our torque wrench set to 55 foot-pounds. Check your service manual on your ear. We're gonna torque down the front axle here, right about there. Now, we'll torque down the axle pinch bolt. All right about there. Okay, now the next step is going to be to torque your rotor bolts. So we're gonna to torque these to 24 foot-pounds. Of course, check your service manual. This torque on these is very important. So we're gonna start here at this one. We should be able to hold on to the wheel with your other hand. right there until it clicks. Now, we're gonna go across to the other side, torque this one. And we're just kinda of making a mental note of which one we have and have not torqued. Or you can mark it with a marker if that helps your, you retain this info. All right, I think we have them all, so we're just gonna go around, make sure each one clicks. All right, now what we're gonna do to be sure that the bolts don't back out is called torque striping. We use a lot in the aerospace industry. We're gonna take a little black magic marker or just a Sharpie, whatever color you choose. And we're gonna put a little dot at the bolt and I'm gonna put the dot towards the axle and I'm gonna put it on each bolt. This way I can do a walk around in the morning or before I go for a trip or even just at the gas station, I can look and see that little dot there. I know they're all pointed towards the axle. So as long as they're all still in the same spot, I know the bolts haven't backed out. So we'll just go to each one, add a wee little dot there. front wheel is on, your axles bolts are torqued, your rotor bolts are torqued, we're ready to put the brake caliper back on. So just make sure your pads are spread apart. And slide it right up on over the brake rotor. And you can take your bolts, run these back in there. Snug each one of these up. And then torque those to spec. So now that everything's on there, we're gonna to torque our brake caliper bolts to 28 to 30 foot pounds. Then from there, we can reinstall the front fender.
All right, your fender bolts are back on, everything's back on, tightened up. Now, last thing you wanna do is pump your brakes a few times, because remember, since you had your caliper off, things have moved back a little bit, so pump it up to make sure you still have front brakes. So that's all we have. And remember, lowbrockcustoms.com has all your brakes, parts, and accessories that you'll need for your sports are covered. This has been Noble Tech Tip. We'll see you next time.